What up, what up, what up, people? What up? And all good things must come to an end. This is my review. This is L Teddy 27, I should say. Angry Teacher Chronicles. This is my review for David Makes Man Season 1, Episode 10. The season finale. The much awaited, much anticipated season finale we got a lot to get through here and we're gonna try and get through this in under 45 minutes that's my goal the over under for this video is 45 minutes i'm gonna take the under who knows all right so somebody told me whenever i stop my reviews by taking the drink that i automatically I'm in a bad mood. And that's not true. I was in a bad mood about uh, the Love and Hip Hop last week. And I think I did take a drink. But that's not always true. Whatever. Anyway. So we start off this episode with um, a flashback of Sky's last day alive. Okay. Sky is in the kitchen cooking a Miami delicacy. I mean, salmon croquettes, even though they called it salmon, as a native Miamian. Salmon croquettes, um, if you've never had them, um, originates um, out of Bahamas, actually, when you really uh, go to the history of it. And if you know anything about Miami, much of Miami cuisine, food, and so forth originates from Bahamas. Because Bahamians are the ones, are a part of the people who actually started the city of Miami. Anyway, um, if you've never had salmon croquettes, I don't really know. Ugh, I'm trying to think. It's like, think of them almost like salmon fritters. But not quite. But yeah. Um, but it, it's a, a very, uh, and Sky was right. With salmon croquettes, you can't just give someone the recipe. You literally have to show them how to make it, and then they'll know how to make it. When I first learned how to make it, someone had to show me how to make it. So good. If you ever come to Miami, I could recommend some good spots for you to get some good salmon croquettes. The best ones are homemade, though. You got to get some homemade salmon croquettes. If you go to a restaurant and they're selling them and it's not hmm, it's not in Miami or um, Bahamas, you ain't getting the good stuff. So, anyway, um, we next, um, Shinobi comes over to Sky's house. Shinobi's sister apparently um, got shot by a stray bullet. Um, and they just recently had the funeral and Shinobi is sad and up in arms and up in sorts about his sister dying. Well, he's really not as sad as Sky expects him to be. And Sky says, why aren't you with your family and so forth? And so on. he was like, I am with my family. He was like, nah, you need to go be with your family. And so they have this back and forth. Shinobi is going to end up being all, th I mean, Shinobi is throughout we have more shinobi in this episode than we did in the entire season which may be foreshadowing for next season i'm going to venture to guess that we got so much shinobi this season because shinobi is going to play an intricate part in next season that's my prediction so Sky gets a phone call. It's um Ray. Ray is calling um after he wrecked his car. So Sky goes over to Ray's house. Sky gets in there. Ray is in there playing video games, talking about so old. I'm trying to just calm down after the accident. Sky's like Sky looked at that car. Looked at that car. Went in that house. Sky was like, what? When I tell you, Sky gave that young man one more good hit, like a dad needs to give a son. Who's been, who's out of pocket, out of order. And, that, you know, if you grew up, in, if you're a black man, you grew up in the household with your dad. 
there comes that point in time where your dad got to put the ones and twos on you because you start to feel yourself and you start to be grown. And he has to remind you, you ain't grown yet. And I felt like this is what was happening with um, Sky and Ray. And Ray was a spoiled brat. And I think Sky realized at that point, I done helped add to his being spoiled even by just giving him this car because he was real nonchalant about this car getting wrecked out man sky hit that boy so hard <laughs> he fell down he hey for you knew it it was two to the head three to the body the mom comes in and breaks it up ray is embarrassed he's the little punk and ray then um says oh i'm gonna tell my uncle Meanwhile, in the background, who's playing the Clock Sisters? Higher, higher means life by the Clock Sisters. And I know some of the younger people, the millennials, they only know that song because of Jay Z's um, album, last album, where he sampled the song. But that is the Clock Sisters. Those of us who grew up Kojic, baby, you know the Clock Sisters when you hear them. Shouts out to Twinkie, who wrote that song. Okay? Anyway. So then we see Sky. He's at the Ville. He's talking to David. And he's just trying to school David about being better than him. Keep that in mind. Bookmark that. He And he's talking to David about him wanting to be David, David be better than him. Light Bright then comes through. Um, because this is at the time after um, Ray told his uncle about Sky beating him up. So here comes Light Bright who comes in to kill Sky. And we have the whole reenactment of that from a different angle. Of um, David seeing Sky get shot and killed. So forth and so on. Then, you know, I ain't gonna lie. I am not gonna lie. I was getting turched when David was over Sky's body. And Sky's dead and bleeding out. Sky's lifeless body is there dead, bleeding out. And David starts to try and hold Sky's body. You see the blood on his hands. Baby, they was taking me out early on in the episode. They was taking me out. And thank God for Glow. Thank God for Glow. Because Glow snaps David out of it. David wakes up. Flashback is over. Uh, glow is telling David to get off the bus so they can get uh, go back home. And thank God, because she snapped David out of that, and she snapped me out of my tears, honey, because, baby, they were trying to take me out early on, honey. Anyway, so next, um, uh, we see Glow, David, and JG arriving back at the Ville. Um, and David has this moment where, um, when Glow and JG goes upstairs, and David's downstairs for a little while longer, and David pauses, and it's like the whole, everybody in the Ville pauses and looks at him. The kids, the grown people, the children, everybody just stops and looks at him. And you know this is his imagination, because you know David's mind, you know, does these things. And David, and I think this was supposed to be, well, I know I should say, it was supposed to be everybody staring at him in judgment, blaming him. Um, adjudicating him because they deem him responsible for Willie Derrick's death but that is his subconscious placing blame on himself so um, Shinobi then um, when David's going upstairs Shinobi then rolls up on David Shinobi done got beat down okay Shinobi then tells David um, that he got beat up by Lightbright now Light bright done beat pistol whip Shinobi. Now, I question, and we're gonna find this out. This may find come in season two, but you'll see why I'm questioning this later on. I question whether or not Shinobi actually got beat up by Light Bright. Shinobi says that Light Bright beat him up, but is that really the case? And that we'll get to that later. So, um, Shinobi says, oh, he was beat up by light, bright, light, bright, light, bright, turn on the magic of colored lights, you know, him. And it says he was pistol whip, he looking for Ray, um, if you know where Ray at, let, you know, you probably need to tell, and so David is, stops and says, listen, Sky ain't want this for us, you need to get out, get out now, go get a script and get out now, because if... 
Light Bright is doing that to you, he ain't going to stop. So you need to get out and get out now. Since you, uh, um, because you can. Um, <clears throat> then we, um, so David tells, um, Shinobi, hey, you know where the scripts are. Get another script. Write a, um, prescription. Get some money. Sell it. Get some money and get out. And don't look back. Keep that in mind. This is all a part of David's big master plan. So then, um, the rent lady comes and tells Glow about the vigil that they still want to have for Willie Derrick. Since Willie, they didn't get to have it because of the hurricane. Glow ain't trying to hear it. Glow is like, listen, I don't feel good. I ain't, I'm, I'm not here, try, here to talk. So the rent lady gives the flyer to JG to give to his mama later. David then um, is downstairs still, and he sees Tara. Tara, Tara, whatever her name is. Uh, I'm getting like Really Be TV now. Shouts out to my girl Really Be TV, who never gets anybody names right, anyone's names right. So Tara and this other little girl are there, and they were, Tara was like, my mama told me not to talk to you. The other little girl was like, my mama told me not to talk to you too. And basically it's because the moms blame David for uh, Willie Derrick's death because they say David is the one who's serving with because David is serving with the um, other um, drug dealers. But I'm like, well, how are they blaming David? Because these drug dealers been in the veal this whole time. And Willie Derrick, I mean, I, I didn't like that part because I'm like, wait a minute. How the moms blaming David all of a sudden? And they've been serving drugs in the veal this whole time. I, it's the hood. Okay, come up off it. But whatever. They said they moms blame David or whatnot. Um, David is kind of taken aback by terror. And he's like, girl, you blaming me. Did your mama blaming me? Did your mama tell you how she used to buy weed from Sky? And she was like, my mama ain't never do that. He was like, yeah, everybody mama ain't never do that until they do. Because his mama was trying to act all holier than that. I was with David on that. Like, girl, you just going to blame me. Like, I ain't give them drugs to him. And David tells her, I ain't responsible for that. Anyway. Um, next, we see David goes over to Miss Elijah's house. So, David tells Miss Elijah, I need you to help me out with this plan. So, David has this uh, master plan. And it was during this scene that I almost got a little confused. Because I wasn't fully aware of the plan. Which did unfold and was unsheathed and unraveled later on. But David and Miss Elijah have this conversation about the plan. Because he was like, listen, I'm trying to get out. And I think David went to Miss Elijah the way he did. Because he already had that. The talking to Miss Elijah part was a part of the plan. So the method and mannerism by which he went to Miss Elijah was already calculated by David. David, if you have not realized, always has thought things out eight steps ahead. Most of the other people only think steps out, two things out, two or three steps ahead. David has already mapped his stuff out eight to ten steps ahead. So this whole um, fashion and way in which he comes to Miss Elijah was already calculated by David. Which I like. I like the intelligence on David. So, um, Miss Elijah reluctantly goes along with the plan. And, um, David alludes to, I was, now this is the part that I was really uh, uh, confused with. And I tell you all the time, when I do these reviews, it's not, I, I, it's always right after I watch it. I literally get up from watching TV and turn on the camera and make my review. So I've only seen it one time. Now, by the time I go over to Really Be TV's um, panel, if you're not watching um, the panel that we do on Really Be TV's um, channel, uh, every Friday night you are missing out because her, myself, and every reviews all of us who reviewed this show, we get together and we all talk about how we saw it and we do a whole panel discussion on the show. I'm sure we'll have an interesting one tomorrow. But anyway, by the time I get there, I've seen it at least twice. 
But when I make these reviews, I've only seen it once. So sometimes I do miss things, and you all always get in the comments. And Aga, Aga with me about um, what you saw and what I missed. So, I thought David had clocked tail. I thought David was saying that he felt like Teo might have been gay. And the reason I think, and in my mind, I said the reason David did that was because he wanted to make Miss Elijah jealous and Miss Elijah go along with the plan because Miss Elijah really does have feelings for Shinobi. And if Teo is gay and Shinobi is playing along with playing around with Teo or Teo is trying to get Shinobi, Miss Elijah is going to do whatever she can or he can, I should say, to try to get Shinobi away from Teo. I, I was trying to connect dots. And y'all help me if I'm connecting dots in ways that they should not be connected. Y'all going to do it anyway. Y'all always in the comment section. I appreciate y'all for being in the comment section. To Aga, Aga with me. But that's what I was doing. I was connecting those dots. Anyway, where am I at in my notes? All right, I'm right there. So, Miss Elijah goes reluctantly goes along with the plan, okay? Um, and then we see um, the next scene. They're at this vigil or this meeting or whatever they're having about Willie, Der Willie Derry. This lady gets up and she's talking about the drugs in the veal. And then she turns and says that it's uh, David's fault. And I was here for Glow. Because Glow, like any good mother, baby Glow got up and was like, uh-uh, no, you not. Oh, no, what we're not going to do is you sit up here and blame my child. My child, like, baby Glow went off. And I was here for Glow. David is in his feelings, and he tries to take um the blame for it. And, you know, says, oh, yeah, I'm not serving drugs, but I know who is, and I'm around them. And... I need to speak up more often and so that these people aren't doing these things. So maybe, you know, indirectly, I am to blame for Willie Derrick's death. Glow wasn't feeling it, honey. She wasn't here for it. But he does lie and say he ain't um, serving the drugs. We know he is. But uh, he lies and says that he's not. Um. Next, we see Shinobi goes to Miss Elijah's house. Trying to get him some again. Miss Elijah says, no, not today. I ain't letting you in. Shinobi gets upset and goes off. Miss Elijah starts to go off with him. And they have this, you know, standoff. And Miss Elijah said, if you want, I will um, take off this. I'll let you know what's behind this makeup and let you know that maybe she's born with it. You know, for the Maybelline commercial. Maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's Maybelline. And <laughs> Mr. Lyle, that, that line was so cute. He was like, baby, you look at all this Maybelline. If you want to, I'll show you that she was born with it. Baby, I cackled when I heard that. It was such a cute line. I was like, yes. But anyway, they go back and forth. All of this was play, And this is why I tried to connect those dots earlier. Because you could see... This back and forth between Miss Elijah and Shinobi, you could tell they both genuinely have feelings for each other. This ain't no just casual hookup. They start throwing names at each other and so forth and so on. They both like each other. Now, I'm not going to say love, but they both, they both have strong feelings for each other. And you could tell in this confrontation. Y'all let me know if I'm seeing it wrong. But from what I see, they both genuinely have feelings for each other. Real feelings. Not no play play feelings. Not no bust down Tatiana feeling. No, they got real feelings for each other. And so you can see. Um, and he, so he asked Miss Elijah for a script. Um, for the script pad. And Miss Elijah was like, I ain't giving you no script pad. And so they have more back and forth. So Miss Elijah gives them one. And say, I ain't giving you nothing else. And tell your boss he know where to find the rest of them. 
Elijah, um, and when um, he gives it to Shinobi, when Shinobi goes off, Elijah is, Miss Elijah is in her feelings about it. You could tell. Because she does like Shinobi. And you could tell Shinobi was hurt when Miss Elijah said, no, I got company. And Because when he said that to um, Shinobi, Shinobi looked like his whole world was crushed. He had already been, he felt like Miss Elijah was someone that he could go to. Because Shinobi done been through a lot, as you can see. And... Miss Elijah genuinely was always there for him. And before he asked about the script pad, he, and be, even before he was going there for the, you know, the head that he was about to get from Miss Elijah, he wanted Miss Elijah to be there for him, to listen to him and talk to him. And you could tell this is something that Miss Elijah had done for him on many occasions, had been there to be a listening ear, to be his confidant, his companion and everything. And so that's why I said, Miss Elijah and Shinobi have real genuine feelings for each other. And I think that hopefully we'll get more of this in season two because I want to know more. I was really intrigued by this relationship. So, but anyway, he gives them one of the scripts from the script pad and they, you know, part ways. Miss Elijah is kind of in her feelings about that. But she sucks it up and keeps it moving. Um, next we see Teo meets up with Ray. And Teo was like, basically, you fucking up the money. You fucking up the business. You fucking up the money. You're fired. You're fired. And he fires him. But he said, listen, tell me about this David guy. Tell me about your friend David. And, um, it, it you know, it, the scene ends right there. Next thing we see, Sarah and Mama done rolled up at the veil. Conveniently, while she's waiting there, because the veal was still without power. Power came back on at the veal, and everybody's celebrating. And they all, the whole neighborhood is so happy that the lights is on the damn pit, her no mind. David comes over there and said, Can I help you? Why are you here, boo? You don't got to worry. They more um, concerned with the fact that the lights are on, so ain't nobody coming to rob you. And she was like, oh, I'm just retracing my steps because I know you were the last one that he saw. And you need to tell me what um, Sarah meant by the letter. She was like, why don't you ask him? Um, David was like, why don't you ask him? And she tries to have this back and forth with David. Baby, David told her, you don't want to know what I know. Because I know about his bruises. I know that he was beat so bad he couldn't even walk. I know about the fact that he has to worry about some nigga going in the bed with him. And I, David let her know by no uncertain terms. Baby, I know everything going on in your household. I know more than you know um, what's going on in your, in your own household. So you don't even want to know what I know. And you don't want other people to know what I know. Baby, you better keep it moving. It's time for you to punch it and keep it moving before I get to telling what I know. Because when I start to tell what I know, things are going to happen. Baby, he let that woman have it, honey. I was here for it. And then, and then, after that, baby. Oh, not yet. Let me back up because I got way ahead of myself. David is on his way back to the house. David sees Sky. David starts asking Sky this series of questions. The most important question was what um if he had one wish, what would it be? And he said and Sky says that my son would be better than me. David then asks him, "Am I better than you?" Um, or am I better? Alluding to I'm your son, am I better th than you? And so they have more exchange. You know how David does with his subconscious with him and Sky uh, um, going back and forth. And he never really answers the question. David then goes in the house. And you have the best scene of the show. Baby. Now, it's all in David's subconscious. So it's, I'm telling you up front, it's not real. It's in his subconscious. But in his subconscious, him and his mama glow. Have this epic fight. I mean, knock down, drag out, nasty fight. Where they go back and forth. If you don't watch no other scene from this uh, episode, go back and watch the scene where there's this um, fight between Glow 
and David. Because they lay it all out. Put it all out on the table. Her drugs, her blaming him, her kicking him out the house, JG, all of his feelings and upset about. Baby, it was an, her feeling like David was embarrassing her in front of JG. I mean, it was a knockdown, drag out. They was cussing on network television, honey. F bombs and all. But we find out it ain't real. I was so praying that it was real. It wasn't. It wasn't. David come in there, glow half sleep. JG sitting on the house next to, um, on the couch next to her, and um, he tell JG to go lay down. It's time to go to bed. Glow asking him for more pills, and he like, oh, this what we gonna do? This how it's gonna go down? And basically, none of what happened in David's subconscious happened. Basically, all that happens is Glow asking for more pills, and Glow not wanting to talk. Cause David asked. Well, we ain't going to talk about what happened at Grandma's house. She was like, no. Mm -mm. I'm tired. I'm strung out. I don't see it for for your grandma. I don't want to talk about it. Do you have more pills for me? Okay? Because I'm a whole ass drug addict again at this point. <sighs> That's all you can do with that scene is sigh. Shinobi then goes to the... um drugstore to get a prescription field what name does he give david young so he's giving david's name i guess he got a fake id with david's um name and information on it and gives that to the um to the um pharmacist then um next thing is david goes to the school david is going to the school to drop off the script pad back to dr Bree. So that he can keep, uh, so that he can go along. Cause that, remember, Dr. Bree told him, you got until, I think, November 15th. Some date he gave him to get it back to me. My script pad, and then we'll, we'll wipe this slate clean. David took this um, um, script pad back. Mind you, this lights just got back on after the hurricane. So the school ain't open yet. But the principal is there and sees David leaving out the office. After dropping off the script pad to Dr. Bree. So she tries to confront David and says, Well, you know, Sarah's mom wants to meet with you and ask you, What else do you know about Sarah? Because I know you know he's still missing. Baby David looks at her and says, Well, my mom tried to call, but I know the school wasn't open because my mom wanted to call and question why the school let Miss Kelly put her hands on me and didn't call her and let her know. And baby, when the principal looked at her gag, uh, looked at David gag like, whoop, and because the principal didn't know that Sarah's mom put it, and so uh, put her hands on him. And so David told her that to basically let her know, bitch, you don't want it. A bitch, you wouldn't want it. Whatever you got planned, stand the fuck down. Because bitch, you don't want it. And he walked off. Later on, we see that um, Dr. Bree picks up the pad and knows that David dropped back off the pad. And, you know, kept, and not kept his word, but, you know, honored what Dr. Bree told him to do. Meanwhile, back at the drugstore, it's taking longer than normal for this prescription to be filled. Um, Shinobi goes up to the pharmacist and says to the pharmacist, listen, it's taking longer than it normally does. Why is it taking so long? Baby, turn to the side. Here comes police officer. You can come with me. Police officer takes him out to the car, the unmarked car. Baby, who's in the back seat? Tail. Tail apparently has been working with um, Ray, the I'm not Ray, Ray, but with the detectives the whole time, which is why when Ray was getting picked up, he was never getting arrested because Tao had already had a deal with the police detectives anyway. Tao got this shit set up. I'm trying to tell you what I know. Tao is smarter than the average bear, so Tao puts it together and finds out Shinobi. Had been working with um, light, bright, light, bright. Turn on the magic of colored lights. And they had their own little side hustle going on. Tao, not Tao. Shinobi was getting not only um, prescription drugs for, 
for um Ray and David, he was also getting prescription drugs. No. I take that back. No. I just put it together. Oh! This is what happened. David and Ray got this thing completely off of them. David and Ray came up with this whole elaborate plan to put this thing with the extra drugs on Shinobi and on Desmond. I just put that together. Remember, David never saw it for Shinobi. Shinobi has been a threat to David since Sky was alive. So if he could put this on, if he could make Teo believe that Shinobi and Desmond are part of selling drugs behind the scene unbeknownst to Teo, he could have Teo take both of them out and kill, take out two birds with one stone. And that would eliminate all of the problems for David. And Ray. He also knows that that's going to mean that Ray does not have any institutional control in the veil with the whole business. So Teo is going to want to take out Ray as well. So Ray has not taken out two birds with one stone. He's ceremoniously taken out three birds with one stone and used one of those birds to take out the other two birds and himself. Ray probably didn't even know that um, Teo was going to fire him, but David probably knew. And David, pro I told y'all, David is always thinking eight steps ahead. This is a masterful plan here, David. Very well played, David. Now, this is truly chess that David is playing. Truly, truly chess. Because with all, of, and I had already said, David was going to have to take out the power players in order to become the man in charge. Meanwhile, um, so David, Teo goes and confronts. Well, um, Teo goes, not Teo, Desmond goes to meet up, I guess, at the meetup spot with Shinobi. Or, or I'm not going to say with Shinobi, but went to go meet up at some spot that he normally meets up at. He sees Ray's car. Or maybe, eh, I just put that together too. Teo probably told Ray, um, Desmond to go get Ray and told Desmond where Ray was. So Ray could go take out, I'm sorry, so Desmond could go take out Ray. When Desmond sees Ray's car, Desmond goes up to the car uh, with the gun, thinking Ray is in the car. Window rolls down, and there is Desmond. We find out Teo kills Desmond. Tippy. Shinobi's still alive, which is the precursor. I told y'all for season two. So Ray and David meet up. Ray says, um, you know, my uncle told me not to ask no questions about what happened to Desmond, which means Desmond is dead. And he did not kill Shinobi. So that's how we find that out. So Ray is talking about, oh, we still going to be, you know, how we going to make this better in the veil, you know, with the drug game. And David is like. You ain't doing you ain't you ain't working over here no more. But David basically tells him, You ain't working here no more. I got this. And he was like, Oh, that's how it's gonna be. You you think you gonna um be able to and handle me and David is like, Don't worry, you know I can. And so Scott, not Sky, Ray talks about you sound just like my dad, this, that, the third, and da 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 da. He has this touchy feeling moment, so forth. And David it re David kind of really is the feeling. David's like, okay. You can go on now. I have no more use for you. And so we have this um, scene where we see Miss uh, Dr. Woods Trap calls Hurston to, um, um, she doesn't come out and say it, but she calls the admissions office about David's admission into Hurston, kind of alluding to that she's going to give her recommendation. 
David, meanwhile, back at the Ville, has told Tara that, you know what, I'm not going to go to Hurston. I'm going to go um, to the local high school and, you know, I'm a, you know, because they need me here. They need him there more than one way. His mom needs him, but they need him to run the business. Remember, early in the episode, Teo told Ray, tell me about your friend David. When he fired Ray. David is about to take on this whole operation in season two. And um, so it ends with David back in the Ville. And David is watching the kids play um, football. And him and Tara talk. And, you know, they have this cool moment. And Tara's mom calls her. And he was like, your mom always um, calling you. She was like, calling you. And she was like, only when I'm talking to you. So I'm guessing that's... Um, you know, a budding storyline for season two with Tara and David, you know, maybe having a relationship. We got the Shinobi storyline. Shinobi, it looks like, is going to play a much bigger role in season two. And Ray is not going to have as big of a role. Maybe he is. But it looks like we're going to find out a lot, a lot, find out a lot, find out a lot more about Shinobi in season two. David, I can see taking um, the reins as the head of this whole operation, this drug operation. And that was basically it. Some people may say that they didn't like the ending, really, BTV. I'm going to say this. The thing I appreciate about Terrell Alvin McCraney, he always get. if you remember the ending of Moonlight, he leaves you at the end upset wanting more where you're like wait a minute that's the end but I needed more I wanted more answers and he just doesn't give them to you which I'm okay with I enjoyed the episode now I enjoyed the episode I enjoy even as I'm making this video piecing things together and connecting dots I loved how this whole um, plan that David had was orchestrated and how it played out. I really enjoyed the episode. Really thoroughly enjoyed the episode. Um, the only thing that I wanted them to at least give me a cliffhanger about what, and I guess they did last episode, was what's going on with Saren? Who is Saren with and what is going on? We didn't get any parts of what's happening with Saren. So, now that this season is over... And we're about to get in this comment section. And Aga, Aga, I want to know a couple things. First, what was your favorite episode this season? I'm going to tell you my favorite episode is episode eight. Favorite episode, episode eight. Obviously, my episode eight review is your favorite review of mine because it got, got the most views um, of all of my reviews. Episode eight is my favorite by far. So, um, what's your favorite episode and why? Now that this show is over, that leaves me with space in my... Actually, I have space for two new episodes. Not two new episodes. Two new shows. What is a show that you would like for me to review on my channel and give commentary on? I really want your... Um, answer to that question. What show? I really want to know what shows you would like for me to review. I'm not saying I'm definitely going to do it, but I might. So I'm looking to you to give me some recommendation for shows that you say, hey, L Teddy 27, I want you to review this show. Okay. Let me know. Uh, put that in the comment section as well. And then give me all your thoughts about this episode, how you felt about the ending. You liked it. You loved it. You are indifferent about it. All that Good, bad, ugly, and in between. That's all I got. I don't even know whether or not I made the over under on my 45 minutes for this review. But it is what it is. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen. Thank y'all for coming. Y'all drive safely.